Good morning, Spark of Hope. I hope you've had a wonderful week. Thank you for coming to keep me company. And seriously, how good of you to come on a Saturday, sit down and take the time to listen and learn with me after you've had a full week. That alone shows your dedication to your walk with God and your dedication to hope. Let's say a, a quick prayer. Lord, we thank you for giving us a most wonderful August. And Lord, we appreciate the food that we were able to eat, the pillows that we slept on, the air condition that we most certainly needed in the month of August, and all of the things you provided we are most thankful we take nothing for granted, that we still have our health, and that in this pandemic, some way, somehow, we are making it, and we owe it all to you, and we say thank you. Now, Lord, open our ears to hear. Make our hearts good ground to receive that which you're going to speak to us today in Spark of Hope. God, we love you in Jesus' name. And every spark of hoper said, Amen. Amen. Well, today I want to kind of go right into our three topics. Um, yesterday I went to downtown Disney. And so, of course, they have all kind of protocols uh, for safety sake and CDC. And in this... Um, there's a scan that you walk through, but it's with an officer and a dog. It's a very interesting experience because all they do is at one step of their um, screening, they say to you, just, just walk straight through. Don't stop walking. Just walk straight through. And this officer circles you one time with this dog. Well, ahead of me was a young man and a young woman together, and they pulled them aside, and the officer asked them, look, be honest with me, he said, do you have weed on you? And the, the young man kind of looked at me and said, no, no, I promise to God, I, I don't have anything like that on me. And, you know, they kept saying, are you sure? He said, no, no, I, I promise you, look, I, I have nothing on me. And so, you know, they just kind of patted him lightly. Then the officer said to him, well, did you smoke earlier today? He said, no, sir. No, no, I didn't. Um, and they said, well, does anyone you know smoke? And the guy said, oh, you, he said, one of my family members um, smokes marijuana. Um, and the officer said, uh, then that's what the dog picked up on. You know, we talked about shadows. Now I'm talking about even smells and how we have to be so careful the environments that we put ourselves in because these environments even can affect an animal or a pet just through a smell that your presence, your bodily presence walking into a room could cause a pet to go nuts perhaps because they can sense you've been in an environment that maybe isn't the best for you. I guess what I'm alluding to is when I talked about, you know, what's in your shadow last, um, last month, now even dealing with a smell. When you think about that, like, oh my gosh, an animal can pick up just a smell around me. And I have written here, 
the spirit of the environment will roam with you. And I guess I'm talking to someone today that your environment could be impeding your success because there's something not right there. There's something not good there. I have here, some people need to be escorted from the VIP section in your life to a regular seat. <laughs> Let me say that again. Some people need to be escorted from the VIP section of your life to a regular seat. If you want to get ahead, and the Bible talks about the company we keep, but just to think that it's so powerful that it goes down to the smell, something you can't even smell on yourself. But there are things in your environment that can pick up on it. And who knows what things could be hindered in your life merely because of your environment. I'm talking spiritually, of course. One thing I try to do as far as like what I emit in my environment, when I walk around my home, if there's something on the floor I'm sure to pick it up immediately. If there's something dirty, I try to clean it immediately. If there is something out of place, I've been sitting on the couch relaxing and now I'm no longer gonna be on the couch, I straighten the pillows out because I want the Lord to see. I'm talking spiritual. An atmosphere here of gratitude and thanks and humility. I want the Lord to see that I'm so grateful that I'm being careful to take care of that which he has given me. So this month, let's monitor our environment and the things that could be a smell coming from us in the spirit. All right, let's move to our next topic. Next, I have here church family. I was thinking about this, and, and I think sometimes when we um, have been born and raised in the church and we've been around the church so much, sometimes the significance of the things we do, the weight of it, isn't really there for us because we're so used to it. But the thought came to me how we call each other brother, sister. We even call our, our pastor and wife, spiritual parents, the father of the church the mother of the church, my spiritual father, my spiritual mother. As church family, we use these terms like father in the Lord, mother in the Lord. When I speak to you, I preface your name with brother or sister. And I want that to sit differently with you from this month on, when you say, and I, I'm just going to uh, use a name for instance, um, Sister Harper, Mother Trust. You get what I'm saying? Mother Jones, my first lady, my father in the Lord. Do you realize the terms that we are using with one another? Therefore, do you realize the, the great love that should be between us? The care? Let's remember that this month. The next time you say like, Sister Nicole, you're calling her, you're like a sister to me. 
Brother Isaac, you're like a brother to me. Remember these things, okay? And it should help remind you how important we are to each other. There are, let's be honest here, there's family that may be related to us by blood that when we get to the other side and God comes back for the church, they won't be a part of that. But do you realize you and I will be together for eternity? Wow. You, my spark of hope brothers and sisters, will always, always be in my life. For eternity, you will be in my life. Talk about soulmates. <laughs> Spending an eternity together, that's what we are. Let's move to the next topic. All right, are you enjoying the topics so far? Let's move to our last topic for September, and that is suggestion and manipulation. Our thoughts are a combination of our own ideas and the choices that other people want us to make. Let me read that again to you that I, I've written here. Our thoughts are a combination of our own ideas and the choices that other people want us to make. You know, in advertising, they do little things to get your mind already in the position to purchase before they even start. Like they may start their commercial and somewhere you may see a, a dollar sign or uh, cash or money or coins. I was watching a show and they had a magician on and he was talking and walking in this video and then he asked them, he said, I want you to draw something on a piece of paper and I'm going to predict, calling it magic, what you've drawn. Well, they were like, I don't know. He said, I want all hundred of you to participate. This was on Zoom. And all of them drew, all of them drew a picture of the sun, circled it, put rays around it, and then put like a smiley face, or some just put, you know, a picture of the sun, but a lot of them made the sun to include um, a smile and eyes. He said, it's really not magic. Let me reveal to you what I did. He rewound the video, and he showed how on the gate behind him, he had had a little sun put on there. And then there was another section where like on an advertisement behind him was the sun. So little here and there, not up front, but slightly giving cues, mental cues. So he said it really wasn't magic. He said, but... I was trying to manipulate your mind in advance. And he was just showing them how it works. And these are tools that um, they teach in advertising. You know, my degree is in global business with an emphasis in advertising. And so I want to see if you may have someone in your life that's manipulative, signs of manipulation. They use your weakness against you. They are witty and ready to argue. They are persistent until they get a yes. They use guilt trips. They project their feelings onto you. <laughs> they give you the silent treatment. They judge and criticize their victims. And then they also play the victim. And lastly, they gaslight you to create self-doubt. Some of you may say, Gregory, what is 
gaslighting. Um, the definition of that is to manipulate someone by psychological means into questioning their own sanity. Let me read that to you again. Gregory, what is gaslighting? Um, to manipulate someone by psychological means into questioning their own sanity. Let me read a little bit further about gaslighting, okay? Gaslighting is a form of psychological and manipulation and emotional abuse. The gaslighter avoids responsibility for their toxic behavior by lying, denying, and making you question facts, your memory, and your feelings. Basically, the gaslighter makes you feel crazy and confused. But you have to know you have a sound mind. God has given us a sound mind. Listen, when someone apologizes to you, and they continue the same behavior, they're trying to manipulate you into accepting that sick friendship relationship. When a person apologizes and there's no change, something's wrong. People who feel the need to control others don't have control over themselves. Although, most of them outwardly will try to appear as if they really have it all together. They do everything right. You get what I'm saying? And it's through um, this outward expression of I'm always right that they're actually using their imagery of perfectness to control you. I have here some people are really so delusional that they think it's disrespectful when you don't just sit back and allow them to continue to disrespect you or whatever it is they're trying to do to you. They are so delusional that they get upset when you don't do things their way. They literally get upset. Now, here's one thing um, before I close. I'm not going to be much longer. But one thing I want you to take away today, write this down. When you have a conversation, the adversary always wants the point to get lost. You're having this conversation and you begin to make a point um, back at them at why this isn't and you get so flustered that you forget why you even started that sentence. <laughs> Has anybody ever been there? I can just see some of you going like, yeah, that's happened to me. Where you're having a conversation and you're trying to make a valid point and in it you get lost in the conversation. You've totally lost your point and you're like, why? I don't know why I was saying that. You know what I'm saying? So my advice to you, especially when you're dealing with a manipulator, while you're talking, write and talk so that the adversary doesn't use confusion to make you lose your point so that you're not able to speak the truth and put the truth out there. Does that make sense? Well, I hope that helped you. Spark of Hopers, I hope you enjoyed those quick lessons and I believe that um, they will help you through this month and again I thank you for keeping me company and I want you to know my brother my sister that I love you as our first lady has taught us I love you to life if you're going to plant a seed with spark of hope and I hope you will this is your time to do that you can go online and plant that seed in spark of hope know that uh, the Lord our God is with us and we're going to have a fantastic September. Do you receive that today? Do you really receive that today? Then just repeat it. I don't care who thinks you're crazy, but just say out loud, my September is getting ready to be the bomb. There's so much happiness. Say it. There's so much happiness. There's so much joy. There's so much provision. 
There's so much healing in my September. In Jesus' name, God bless you.